Welcome everyone to this painting diary. This is definitely more of a record of my process than a tutorial. For my example mini, we'll be using my kit-bashed Adrax Agatone stand-in for my Exorcist Space Marine. In order to tackle my absurd painting backlog, I've been utilizing the slap chop method. For my exorcists, I've been making use of browns instead of the usual grays. Since we're looking for coverage with this initial step, I'll be using this stubby makeup brush. Though it's not very apparent in the video, I made use of stippling as well as dry brushing in order to make up for the many flat panels of Mark 10 Tactics armor. I also decided to focus more on the model's left hand side to simulate an offset light source. I like to try to change things up occasionally to give myself opportunities to do some first hand learning. In this next step, I'll show you what not to do. When proceeding with the next lighter and more selective layer of dry brushing, I left my brush far too wet. It is called dry brushing after all. Pay attention to the curved surface on the ankle. There it goes. The first layer entirely gone. Whoops. After fixing my goof, I moved on to the final layer and my first proper miniature paint with good old wraith bone. This is where I find the whole slap chop thing really comes together. Just a light touch on the bits you want to stick out, in this case, still favoring the mini's left side. I find a pure slap chop approach often leaves some things too dark in the final product. So here I've based the candles and the hammer with Rakarth flesh and given them a nice dry brush with Pallid Witch flesh. So hopefully they'll catch the eye a little bit more in the final product. Now we get to the real heart of the matter. We'll start with Flesh Tears Red for the armor it is the bulk of the surface area. Staying inside the lines, so to speak, is a key skill with Slap Chop, as unnoticed mistakes can be very difficult to fix. Next, we'll move on to Black Templar for the power pack, gun casing, and trim. We don't want anyone confusing us for the Blood Angels. The trim will be quite the test for a novice's brush control. Be careful. Now we'll move on to some detail work, starting with two workhorses in my paint collection, Snakebite Leather and Skeleton Horde. Here I'll use Snakebite for all the pouches. As Skeleton Horde is a fairly weak color, I heavily dry brush the areas I'd be applying it to. It would be too hard to see otherwise. As I'd given the candles a lighter base coat, I toned down the paint with contrast medium so that the brighter base coat would shine through. Proceeding with our detail work, we have Magos Purple with Wax Seal. Our next color will get a little bit more of a workout. I used Basilicanum Gray for the tactical rock, tubing, the undersuit, any little detail that didn't really need to stand out. We're speed painting here, can't get bogged down with the little stuff. We're coming along quite nicely. You'll be leading your boys into battle in no time, my diminutive friend. Trying times of the enemy of the speed paint and texture paints are some of the worst offenders. We'll go ahead and put that down now to get the process started. Now let's work on the head. I want a darker skin tone. Wildwood is a little too dark for what I'm looking for. I've toned it down with medium. Next, 
the hair. Has anyone here seen Demolition Man? We're in the final stretch. Normally I use red for the details of fancy weapons, but as that's our armor color, I've opted for green instead. On to the metallics. I've used a dark silver for the more practical bits like gun and armor parts, and a brighter silver for the more decorative items like the rings on his icon. What's a captain without some bling? Gold to the rescue. It's the Emperor's favorite color, after all. I've also thrown some bronze on the hand flamer to make it look proper burning. Remember what I said about dry times? The texture paint is ready to be stained the color of our choosing, in this case, snakebite leather. Now it's time for some party tricks. We're going to use these four colors to attempt some flame effects. Starting with the hard one, I'm going to attempt to make this hammerhead look molten. Line the colors from brightest in the center of each panel to darkest at the outer edges. The candles are the same principle but with a much more conducive shape. The hammer wasn't quite right, so I applied a glaze of the yellow, orange, and medium all mixed together. It helped, but didn't get me to where I wanted to go. I'll do better next time. Next, we'll add some visual interest to the base with Valhalla and Blizzard. This also ties the bases of my exorcists in with those of my long-neglected space walls. To add some depth to the snow mounds, I've been experimenting with Pylar Glacier. Not too much and it looks like someone spilled antifreeze, but that's not out of character for the grim dark future. I've also added the transfers at this point, but I'd encourage you to seek guidance on that part of the process, from someone who struggles at it a little less than I do. And with that, we have a job well done and an evening well spent. Thanks for joining.